and as so she ran back home in tears her parents were infuriated and yelled at her for disobeying their orders in tears she asked why was she kept away from the world what crime has she ever committed to deserve such inhumane treatment they told her to stay clear of going outside Once upon a time, there lived a peaceful family in Amado village. They were blessed with four beautiful children. Emeka and Nkechi loved and doted on their children so much and they showed an exemplary family life. They were renowned traders and carried on their trade with diligence. One day, Nkechi was vomiting continuously and she later discovered that she was pregnant again. Emeka and Nkechi's joy knew no bound as they could not wait to welcome their bundle of joy. This news gladdened their hearts and they prayed for a daughter. Nkechi's pregnancy progressed with a lot of pain and sickness. She had been in and out of hospital so much so that it almost became a regular routine for her. Nkechi's condition resulted that she would get so weak that most days she couldn't go to her place of business. One day, as she was on her way back from the hospital, she met an old lady who told her that the reason she is always in and out of the hospital is that she was carrying a destiny child. The old lady encouraged her to be steadfast that the years ahead of her will be filled with so much trials and tribulations, but assured her not to worry that it will all make sense at the end. Nkechi with a puzzled look on her face, thanked the old woman and bade her goodbye. She kept going till her ninth month of pregnancy. And as soon as their baby came forth, there was no hiding the fact that she had a hideous set of hands, which were not ordinary, as she had extra hands. Unlike normal ones, and so, they kept this a secret from everyone. They named their baby girl Uche. It was Emeka and Kechi's dream to have a female daughter, but they did not expect her to be this deformed. They kept her locked up in the house and prevented her from mingling with anyone. It was as though they did not have a girl child. She wasn't allowed to go to school or attend any social gathering. It was like she never existed. Uche craved to be loved and admired, but no one paid any attention to her. Her parents would always look at her with disgust, and her siblings avoided her. She would cry herself most times to sleep, yet there would be none to console her. One day, Uche decided to ignore her parents' warnings of not stepping out and decided to go look around the village. She wore an apparel that could hide all her deformities as well, but they were still noticed when she stepped out. People mocked her and kept calling her extra hand girl. She could not hide anymore as they wanted to see what her hands looked like without the clothing covering it. And as so, she ran back home in tears. Her parents were infuriated and yelled at her for disobeying their orders. In tears, she asked, why was she kept away from the world? What crime has she ever committed to deserve such inhumane treatment? They told her to stay clear of going outside. Uche, who had already gotten a taste of the outside world, was not planning on keeping her parents' instructions. They tried locking her up after everyone must have left the house, but she devised a means of escaping and concealed her deformity much better and would always go to a nearby bush to talk to her chi. One day, while she was alone talking to her chi, a young boy her age walked up to her and asked her if she was okay. She replied saying yes and she got up to leave immediately and as soon as she did, her clothing dropped to the ground, exposing her extra limb. She was expecting the boy to look at her like she was a monster. But instead of that, he asked her if she was okay 
and if it hurts. She replied saying no, that she is fine. He asked if he could meet her here again. She said sure and she ran home. Uchi made it a habit to constantly visit the boy whose name was Afam. They both became so close and Uchi felt a type of love she never felt before. They were like best friends till they both became adults. One day, Afam told her that he wants to get married and she jokingly asked, when are we getting married? He asked her what gave her the impression that he would marry her, that she is just his best friend. Feeling hurt by his response, she ran home and met her parents who asked her where she was coming from and she said she went to clear her head in the bush. Her parents asked her why she defied their orders and she begged them to please forgive her and without listening to her, they flogged her so much that she ran out of the house. In her frantic effort to escape the wrath of her parents, she stumbled onto a hut as she had kept running into the bush for the fear of anyone seeing her. She went inside the hut to rest and when she woke up after having slept off, she saw a lady who said, I have a cure to your problem. Uche asked her what she felt her problem was. She said, well, you have many problems right now. But the major problem you have is the one that is a matter of the heart. She told Uche that if she desires Afam to pick her as his bride, that all she needs to do is to put this potion in his drink of water and he will want only her for the rest of his life. Handing her the potion, she collected it and said, Isn't that wrong? The woman replied saying that all is fair in love. She collected the potion from the woman, thanked her, and by morning, she hurried home. As she was about going past a certain river, she stumbled and fell, and the potion slipped from her hand and rolled down into the river. She hurried to retrieve it, but for the fear of being seen, she ran back home, leaving the potion behind inside the river when she got home she snuck in so her parents won't continue from where they stopped beating her the day before by nightfall her parents came home to meet a lot of young boys and men with all sorts of gifts for uchi and all were begging her to marry them they rushed into their home in shock only to meet uchi seated on the floor with her hands clasping her ears and crying. They walked up to her and asked her if she knew what was going on. She said no. They asked her where she went to last night because they didn't see her last night. And now she shows up. A host of men are outside their house seeking her attention. She then narrated to her parents what had happened to her. They shouted on her that why would you collect something from a stranger? That didn't they teach her better? She replied saying, No, you did not teach me anything. Am I even your daughter? You look at me with so much disgust and hardly show me any love and attention. But you love and adore my siblings so much. Why do you all hate me? She asked. No one wants to associate with me. Am I the cause of my misfortune? She was still in tears when the Igwe of the community sent for her and as she stepped out, the men outside of her home tried to grab her as she took off running heading for the palace with the men in hot pursuit. When she got to the palace, the king's guard kept the men in control outside the palace. When she appeared before the king, the king demanded an explanation to what happened and she narrated her ordeal to the king. It turns out that the potion spilled into the river and those who fetched the water that morning and drank of it instantly fell in love with her. The king turned to the chief priest and asked what could be done to reverse this. The chief priest said that in order to reverse it, that she would have to make a sacrifice in the river so as to cleanse it of the potion. The king asked, 
that the sacrifice be made immediately. She was taken to the river with her pot for the sacrifice placed on her head. She placed it in the river and asked that her sacrifice be accepted. The goddess of the river appeared to her and said, Uche, your sacrifice is accepted and asked her not to worry that very soon she will know why she is the way she is and vanished before her eyes. Uche, stunned at this event, hurriedly went home and in her dreams that night, she saw the same river goddess who narrated that all her tribulations will be over when she clocks 20 years of age, which was around the corner and vanished again. She kept pondering on what the dream meant. She tried meeting up with Afam, but he had already gotten word that she tried giving him a potion for him to love her before the accident occurred, so he chose to avoid her. She became a ridicule in the community. She felt hopeless and on one occasion tried to kill herself. But she told herself that if after her birthday she doesn't make meaning of what is happening to her, she will take her life. On her 20th birthday, she got up from her sleep and noticed the extra limb was gone. She hurriedly washed her face with water to be sure she wasn't dreaming. And again, she saw the extra limb was gone. Uche ran to go meet her parents who were shocked to see the recent development. Before they could utter another word, a woman appeared to them. Uche recognized her as the river goddess and she said to Uche, now your trials are over. Turning to Uche's father, Emeka, she told him that does he remember that when he was young, he mocked a cripple that a curse was laid on him to be a child with an extra limb and if that child doesn't die from shame till she clock 20 then she will be free from the curse and i cannot remember any of these events because he caused a lot of trouble while growing up he apologized to the goddess and she replied saying i am not the one you offended that you should be apologizing to your daughter because she caused her woes and she vanished before their presence. Emeka turned to his daughter and asked for her forgiveness that he knows he had been a very terrible father and to think he was the cause of all her problems. His wife Nkechi also asked their daughter to please forgive them that they have truly wronged her and they hugged with tears still in her eyes. She said she forgives them. Uche went to meet Afam in his home and when he came out, he asked her where her extra hands were. She said it's a long story that she will explain later. She asked him to forgive her, that she really loved him and did not know what pushed her to do what she did. He went on his knees and asked her to marry him. Stunned by this gesture, she asked, are you under a spell? He said no. That he lied to her when he said he did not want to marry her. That he did not want to ruin the surprise, but wanted to be sure she felt the same way about him. That he loved her, be it an extra limb or not. She kissed him and said, yes, she will marry him. And they both laughed over what she did as she narrated her experience to him. They immediately put plans in motion to get married and they lived happily. The end. The lessons to be learned from this story is that you do not despise any child. Children are the greatest gift of all, no matter the deformation. Love and treat your children equally without showing preference to a certain child. Do not mock or insult anyone because the repercussion might be great. Do not dabble into sorcery, trying to get love. Thank you so much for watching till the end. Please click on the subscribe button to support us. Turn on the post notification to get notified when I upload a new story. Like, share, and comment your thoughts. Till then, bye.